With a Google Ads display campaign, advertisers have the option to upload their own image ads or create a responsive display ad. This is where you would take a variety of your assets, like images, logos, videos, your headlines and descriptions, put them within your responsive display ad, and when it's published, Google will be the one to create the custom combinations, all depending on where your placements are going to be. In this video, we will show you everything you need to know on how to create a responsive display ad and what are the benefits of why you may want to use them. I'm within ad group, so I'm just gonna shut this screen off. So I'm just gonna close this navigation menu and then hop into one of your display ad groups. If it is a brand new ad group, it's easy enough just to click responsive display ad and start creating one. But if you already have image ads in place and you still need to create your responsive display ad, you can also go up to your blue plus button and Google's gonna prompt you to go ahead and start creating your responsive display ad. If you wanna upload your regular image ads, there's the link to do it. You can switch to upload your display ads. We can see right now that our ad strength is incomplete and it's probably gonna start going from poor to average and on its way up as we start filling in more of the sections of this ad. Just so it stopped moving and annoying me, I did pause the preview. We will see the ad update. And towards the end, we can go through the previews to see what our responsive display ad could look like on a variety of placements, on websites, Google properties, YouTube, Gmail, and how it may look between the two different devices. So ad strength is Google's score to show how well your creative fits within their best practices. They say the higher the ad strength, it's gonna maximize the performance of the ad. It's gonna be taken with a grain of salt because what you want your ad to do might be different than what Google prefers but you improve your ad strength by adding more assets and diversifying the assets that you are inputting into the ad. So at the very bottom, we see videos, which we'll get to, is optional. You don't have to have it, but if you have two ads that are exactly the same, one has a video and one doesn't, the one with the video will have a higher ad strength. The reason Google wants you to have as many of the fields filled in as possible and as many unique assets added to the ad is that it gives the machine learning a lot of options to test a variety of different variations. And then over time, the goal is to start showcasing the better performing ad if that's what you have set up within your campaign settings. I'm gonna create a very Frankenstein ad. It's not gonna have one cohesive message. It's just gonna get the job done for this demo. So I'll go up, just paste in a URL, drop down, use the business name. You see we only get 25 characters, so you may have to get a little bit clever if you have a very long business name. And once again, the ad preview is updated. Next, you can add up to 15 images. So let's click on this image link. And initially, Google is going to open up the asset library. These are images that you have already uploaded to Google Ads for previous display campaigns, as well as your discovery and YouTube campaigns. We do have a video talking about the asset library and more on what it can do. You could check that out here. But if you don't have anything within the asset library, you could look at scanning your website for certain images. Our website is not robust, so it's not going to have a lot. You can also scan our social media accounts. We can upload images. If we have different images to use that we haven't uploaded to the asset library yet, or you can go the unfortunate route of choosing stock images. So I just typed in a certain keyword here and through Shutterstock, that's what Google is providing as stock images we can use for our ads. The watermarks will be removed if you do decide to use them. But I'm going to head back to the asset library and just choose a variety of images here. Do that one. Now in this particular image that I selected, you can see there are two different types of ratios. It has the 1.91 to 1 ratio selected, and you can see I could crop it up and down like this, so I can click on one of the corners and drag it so it stays within that frame if I want to zoom in just to a particular section. If I hit select two ratios, between these two ratios here in this first image and the two from the one I just cropped, up top, we see four selected assets. And you should also add a variety of images. While we can add up to 15, maybe having 15 different images of me speaking, that's not a big variety. Ideally, I would wanna have a lot of different ones. Now, there's some images that really don't apply from previous videos. If I click within this specific folder, which we show you how to do in the asset library video, maybe at least a change of scenery. I'll save that, I'll head back to the asset library, select those two, let's get some Michelle in there. All right, we're fine. Looks like we have around 11 images. And already, just by adding several images, we went from incomplete to average. We skipped the poor ad strength score. That makes me happy. Now we can dive down and choose logos. It's still gonna pull up the asset library. We do have one logo here. That's only gonna fit the square ratio. I can look at choosing this one. I don't need the square. Maybe this logo will cover me 
for the four to one ratio for your logo. I'll select that. Definitely not the best option with the super small text underneath, but it's all we have for now. Click save and we see the preview update once again. You can see for images, at least one landscape image is required and one square image is required. I personally try to add more square images than landscape just to make sure I'm covered. And then for logos, you can add up to five logos if you wanna test certain things out there. I know I didn't really cover image best practices for responsive display ads. That is because Michelle has already created a video talking about images for your responsive display ads. So if you wanna dive deeper into the image topic for RDAs, watch this video right here. Next, you can add videos to your responsive display ad. Then as this window opens, you can see that we can choose YouTube videos that you may have already used in other ad campaigns because we are still within the asset library. If you don't see any video showing up in your asset library, you can go up and search on YouTube. In this case, I can maybe look for the Pay Media Pros channel. And since I search for the channel name, it might not be too specific. And then we also see a few options that aren't related to our channel. But I can also go up and pull a specific URL and then choose that video. Type in keywords again, just to help find some video assets. There it's showing. I have three selected, so I could save it here. Now I chose these videos because that's all we have on the Paid Media Pros channel. But you have to think of all the places your responsive display ad could be shown. Yes, they could be shown on YouTube, but as we see in the preview towards the end of this video, it's not exactly the YouTube type ads you're thinking. These ads will also show up on other websites in Gmail, and it's gonna be a much quicker experience. So Google recommends, and I agree with this, to try to keep your videos to about 30 seconds or less. Scroll down a little bit, here is where we get to the portion where we can start adding some ad copy. For the main headlines, we can add up to five, and they are 30 characters each. Same length as a main headline for your text ads. Now Google went ahead, just like we're seeing in the ad preview, they're pulling one of the headlines from the final URL that we first put at the top, and that's just our homepage URL. While that is some content that's on the page, it may not make sense for what we want this ad to do. You don't have to use what they suggest, so I can remove this one. There's one option. I can click on some of their suggested headlines, view more ideas, not giving me too much here. Sometimes you'll see better options, but I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the remaining three spots here. Okay, I filled in my five suggested headlines. Then we can scroll down and see that we need to add a long headline. The long headline is 90 characters long, just as long as one of your descriptions. But the placement of the long headline is going to be different. So it should be unique and not match exactly what you have for your descriptions. So I'm actually gonna take this first description and move it up to the long headline. Again, the long headline may appear by itself, but it also could appear with a description. So for the descriptions, we can add up to five of them, and I'm gonna to try to make them as unique as possible as well. You see, adding our third one, our ad strength just went from average to good, so we keep getting better. Let me see if I can pull at least one more description. All right, I filled in all five descriptions. I'll admit they're not as unique as I would like them to be, but that's something I can always focus on later. We scroll down a little bit, we see there are additional format options. The first is going to be asset enhancements. These are Google controlled modifications, such as automatic cropping, little designs to the text overlays to give it a little bit of a different look. If they feel that your images may tell a better story, sometimes your descriptions may not be included. So that doesn't necessarily mean load your images with text. There is a 20% text rule on your images. If you do not have any videos and you do not want to use the video builder tool within the asset library, if you don't know what that is, you can check out the video here. Google can auto generate videos for you. This is what they do within the performance max campaigns. If you don't have a video, we have already included videos within our ad. So auto generated videos will not apply. But if you did not add video earlier and you don't want Google to make something for you, you can always uncheck this box. And then the last additional format option is to use native formats. So a native ad format will take on the look and feel of the website or placement that they show on. It's supposed to match the tone, give a more comfortable feel, not necessarily make it seem like screaming an ad in your face type style. It's something worth testing. However, if you're held to very strict brand standards, and you don't want your ad to change in any way, not only would I uncheck this because colors could change, I would uncheck everything. Still doesn't give you the full control that you want, but it gives you better control. If you click on add URL options, here's where you can add tracking templates. I'm not gonna get into that because Michelle has a video about tracking templates within Google Ads. You can check that one out here. And then if you click on more options, here is where you can add specific call to action text. By default, it's gonna be automated. You can choose your language. 
but if you don't want it automated, you can choose from one of the specific options that they already have. You cannot create your own custom call to action like you would within a YouTube call to action extension. So you can choose one here. Keep in mind, not every ad layout includes a call to action. You're gonna see as we get to the preview part that some ads are pretty small, so you see why it doesn't fit. If I click on more options again, you can choose custom colors. And this can overlap with the native ad placement option that we just talked about. So if you don't want the native ad placement colors to override the custom colors that you may select, just uncheck this option. Yes, I'm okay with it limiting my reach. But what happens? Look at our ad strength. We didn't make Google happy. So if you're worried about your ad strength, do what they say. Not going to say I recommend it. Just do what's best for your brand and for your account. But you can see you can choose a main color. I'm just picking some random stuff here. I'm not saying that looks good at all, but you can customize it towards your brand colors. So before I save it, let's look at a few options. Let's preview the ad in a few different placements. Right now, we're on websites and apps, and we're on the mobile device. I can go to the key ad formats dropdown, so you can see here's what it could look like as an image ad. Sorry, I wanted to scroll down a little bit so we could see it all. That purple open call to action color is the custom code that we added. If it's a text ad, that's what my ad could look like with just the logo showing. Let's go to native ads, and if I go back up, it's potentially what a video ad could look like. And also why I would probably want a shorter video as people are scrolling, make sure you got your main message in the very front. If I go to desktop, still on websites and apps, video pretty much looks the same. Here's another example of what a text ad could look like on desktop. No images or videos at all. Don't need to go through all of them. Let's go through Google properties. Still on desktop. Here's what our ad could look like on Gmail, and we're on the open version of the ad. Here's what the Gmail ad could look like from our responsive display ad before the user opens it. Besides Gmail, we also get YouTube, because pretty much ads from all campaign types are now showing up on YouTube. It's not just video ad campaigns. There's Discover, Shopping, Text, if you're using the partner network, and of course, display ads are available on YouTube as well. If I go up to mobile, and you're probably seeing it more and more if you use YouTube on your mobile device, many more ads within the main home feed. So as you go through the previews, again, I paused it, so I'm really only looking at one variant at a time. If you hit the play button, it'll start going through a variety of options depending on which placement you have chosen. So then you could potentially see, there's another example right there, do my image selections really work? Do I need to make any changes? Yes, you can always go back in later, but it's always good to preview your work. If everything looks good, just scroll all the way to the bottom, and then you could save your responsive display ad. Right now, since I just created the ad, it's under review. But once it's running for a while and you're reviewing stats, you'll be able to go and view the asset details. And then eventually you'll be able to get very basic information on how each asset is doing. I'm only showing the first 10 rows. Let me expand it to everything. So besides just the text assets, there we see the images, the logos, and even the videos that I added. So these are still under review and learning, but we will eventually get a low, good, or best performance rating for each of the assets. Anything that is low should be swapped out and something else should be tested in its place. Sometimes we like to review the best performing assets for each type of category and Frankenstein a new responsive display ad variant based upon our best performing assets. You can see right here, since it is brand new, I do have two of each asset type. But since I just created it, we don't have 14 days before the rating performance column appears. So if we go up above, there's also a combinations tab. If you click on it, it's going to show you something else. So I'm going to hop into another account that will actually have some information showing up within this tab. And unfortunately, I have to blur out every single combination, but it is going to show you the best image combinations. Some of them have the logo. More than half that are showing just on the screen right now don't. Please note that this is not how the ads actually appear. It's just showing you the combination of assets. And these are based upon the most times that they appear to users. If you are seeing that certain images that aren't your favorite or a certain ad copy or wording that's not your favorite is showing up in some of the top combinations, it could be a good indication for you to start swapping some of these out. It definitely doesn't give us a lot of information, but it's something to understand which assets in each of your responsive display ad is getting the most visibility. I'm going to hop back into the first account. And that's all I have for an introduction to responsive display ads. I personally like to run a combination of controlled image ads or display ads uploaded directly to the system. For me, it's just being the control freak. However, to satisfy all placements and try to expand reach and test out new options, I still add at least one responsive display ad to start testing. 
Sometimes the responsive display ads may take a little bit of time and may need a few rounds of optimization to find out what works for the format. If it doesn't work for the first time, don't give up. If you have any other questions about responsive display ads, you can either check out some of our other videos or ask us in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.